Harvard Business School and the Stanford Graduate School of Business are often seen as the top two business schools in the world, both with incredibly low acceptance rates. But they are quite different experiences. How do they compare? Hi, I'm Gabriela Samaya, Senior Consultant at MBA Mission, and we have worked on thousands of HBS and GSB applications with our clients over the past 20 years. In aggregate, over the last 20 years, we have filled a few classes with our clients. In order to really break down the differences and even highlight the similarities, we can look at the questions we are typically asked by our clients. Okay, let's get started. Question one, are these schools both equally academically rigorous? Because HBS relies on the case method, where 50% of a student's grade depends on class participation, students are required to stay on top of their work. HBS classes start with a cold call, and you do not want to find yourself searching for answers in front of your class because you haven't read the cases. To be clear, reading is a gross understatement. Case prep requires scrutinizing the case, discussing its merits with your team, and most importantly, formulating an opinion. In short, classes are a significant component of the HBS experience, and students invest their time and energy in them accordingly. Stanford, on the other hand, is more reliant on typical lecture classes, which don't demand engagement in the same way. In addition, HBS courses are largely taught by full professors who use the Socratic method to draw the class in, while Stanford uses a higher number of adjunct professors, typically alums who have done remarkably well in business but are not trained academics or teachers. How do we know all of this? Partly from our colleagues who've graduated from HBS and GSB, but mostly from our clients. Over the years, we've learned from their feedback and concluded that HBS is the more academically rigorous of the two because of the intense focus and accountability required by the case method. It's up to you to decide if HBS's intensity suits you. Question two. Which is better, a required first-year curriculum like HBS or a more flexible curriculum like Stanford? As you may know, HBS puts all students through a comprehensive core curriculum in the first year, no exceptions and no opportunities to place out of a subject. In contrast, Stanford's program is more flexible. Students can place out of required courses and take interdisciplinary classes across the street at other schools within the university, like engineering or law. So, HBS believes that students learn best when they have a common baseline and broad exposure to management study, while Stanford believes students learn best when they can develop their own course of study. Neither is better. Which one appeals to you? Question 3. Which school is best for forming lifelong relationships with classmates? HBS is the largest MBA program out there with 900 to 1,000 students per class. So on one hand, there are a lot of people to network with, but on the other hand, you won't know the entire class. That said, you will know your 90-person section extremely well because you will go through that mandatory curriculum together, and of course you'll establish friendships beyond your section through clubs, activities, and more. At about 400 students per class, it's far more likely you will get to know most of your Stanford classmates, even though Stanford doesn't have the same full year commitment to a section. So if you're comfortable regularly meeting new people and establishing new relationships, you might forge more relationships faster at Stanford because its flexibility gives you access to more students and the smaller cohort creates greater community intimacy. But if you prefer structure and repetition to forge friendships, the HBS section model will allow you to foster fewer but more intense relationships faster. In other words, at HBS, you'll be part of a sizable class, but you'll only know a small number closely. At Stanford, you'll have a smaller overall network, but you'll be familiar with a large percentage of the community. So think about who you are and how you socialize before making a commitment to one or the other. Question four, which school has the best location? Well, there are a few ways to look at this, the most obvious being sunny California versus Boston's Four Seasons. And I can tell you from experience as someone who grew up in frigid Canada but went to Harvard undergrad, Boston winters are no joke. But aside from the weather, the importance of location comes down to the professional opportunities available around each school. If you're interested in tech, it's hard to argue with Stanford's place in the beating heart of Silicon Valley as an advantage. In fact, 29% of recent graduates entered the tech field, but HBS students certainly won't lack for opportunity, even in tech, where 19% of HBS students end up. And students at both schools will have ample opportunity in consulting PE and more. 
If you look at each school's career services report, you'll see that salaries are higher than ever and employment opportunities at prestige firms are bountiful. Outside of career prospects in tech, it's honestly hard to give the edge to one school over the other. We would say, the world is your oyster at either school, which is not always the case when comparing MBA programs. With HBS and the GSB, think about culture and class structure to decide where you truly want to be. Question five, which school is best for entrepreneurs who want to found or join a startup? We just talked about the career services report, but entrepreneurship is kind of its own beast. So who has the edge? First, are you going to be an entrepreneur? If so, according to a Poets and Quant study of 2016 through 2020 grads, Stanford dominates HBS with 249 students on P&Q's annual list of its top MBA entrepreneurs, compared with Harvard's 229. 20 students might not seem like a big difference, but it's significant when you consider that Stanford graduates half the class on the list. Still, one report is never the full story. HBS reports that about 50% of all Harvard MBAs will start at least one venture within 15 years of graduation. So if you want to start your own venture one day, you will have plenty of opportunity at both schools. You just might be playing a little bit more of a long game at HBS. Question six. If Stanford is the hardest to get into, is it the number one business school? Stanford admits just 7% of students, while HBS admits nine to 10% annually. So is Stanford the better of the two? Well, we would pause and ask, does that slight difference in selectivity really affect you? One of our consultants who admits dozens of clients to both of these schools looked at her record over the past 10 years and found that among the small number who get admitted to both schools, most choose Harvard over Stanford, especially international students. But does that reflect selectivity or the yield of people admitted to both schools, an admittedly small sample size? In the long run, whether or not you thrive in your MBA environment will affect your experience and outcomes far more than a 2% difference in acceptance rates. As you can tell, much of the debate between Harvard and Stanford comes down to personal preference. Hopefully, you will be one of the rare applicants who can choose from both and think deeply about which school suits you best. In any case, there are many factors when comparing these schools or any others. Hopefully, this gets you thinking. If you're interested in learning more about HBS, the GSB, or any other top MBA program, take a moment to download one or more of our 17 Insider's Guides. And if you'd like personal help choosing the right business school for you, click the link below to sign up for a free 30-minute consultation with one of our admissions experts. And if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe to our channel for more MBA mission tips. Thanks for watching.